So, um, like I always tell you people, I make videos based on questions I'm being asked on both the channel and other social media platforms which I post my contents in. So, um, basically, people have been asking me uh, which is the best cattle breed to raise here in southern Nigeria, which is southeast, southwest, south south. Now, let's be honest to ourselves. Our environment here is totally different from that of the north. The north mostly have rain consistently for like three months out of the 12 months in a year. Whereas here in the south, this is December. As I'm, as I'm talking to you, this is December, I think this is December 24th. We are still having rain. I mean November 24th. This is November 24th. We are still having rain up to now here in Aba. So that's said that our weather is our uh, our environment, our climate is totally different from that of the north. Now, if you go to the north, I'm not sure you there is rainfall up to now. But here in the south, we are having rainfall consistently. Now, that to tell you that it's not every animal you bring from the north that will do well here. It's not possible, and it cannot it cannot happen. So, what are the best cattle and uh, uh, best cattle? and good breeds to be raised here in the south. First of all, on my farm, I have West African dwarf goats. They are fantastic animals. They are already used to the south, uh, southern climate of Nigeria. The high humidity, the high rainfall, the, high temp the cold temperatures, and all, all, all that. Now, also raise muturu cows. These muturu cows are native cows, so they are already accustomed to all these climates. They, cold weather, the too much rainfall. In fact, the muturus, if you give them a chance, they will stay in the rain. That's what I've noticed. Because when I got these animals new, I usually put them in shades when it's raining, but you put them inside, they'll come out. You put them inside, they'll come out. So I was like, is it like these animals like this rain? But at the end of the day, you always have to make sure your animals are inside during uh, the rain, so as, so as to prevent uh, uh, diseases and you know sicknesses. Now, which breeds of okay? Let's start with the goats. Which breeds of goats are the best to be raised in the in the south here? Now, of our local breeds, the best performing local breeds we have here in Nigeria are the Sahelian goats. Sahelian goats reach they weigh over 50 kg in a space of two to three years. They weigh over 50 kg. Now the Sokoto red weighs up to 35 kg in a space of two to three years. The West African dwarf, which is our local goats here in the south, uh, weighs up to 25 kg in a space of two to three years. So you see, these are three different local animals we have in Nigeria and different sizes and uh, uh, weight gain. Now, if you bring the Sahelian here, in most cases, if the management is not right, it's not going to survive. I've had cases whereby a friend of mine brought in goats from from the north, brought them here. Even the Sokoto Red, the Sokoto Red also find it sometimes very difficult to adapt. And that's why sometimes you bring goats from the north to your farm and within one week it has cleared. And it's not, it's not clearing because of PPR. It's not dying because of PPR. It is dying because of the environmental changes. They are finding it very difficult to adapt. Imagine you, okay, you as a human being, you are used to the hot climate in Nigeria. Somebody carries you and goes to Russia and did not take care of you very well, did not tell you, oh, wear these clothes, wear these warm clothes, wear this big sweater, and you just went there, okay, like now, wearing light clothes, imagine if I go there, and the people that I'm going to stay with did not manage and inform me very well, I just go there and still wear my light clothes, could be kill me, that's it, could you finish my life. So that's also the same thing with uh, these animals, if you bring them in a new environment, which they are not accustomed to, they are going to find it hard to adapt, unless they are provided with the right management. Now, there are so many things that involve the management. Housing, medication, and general feeding. Those are things that are accustomed to, that are involved in management. In fact, the three principles, I call it the three pillars of livestock farming is genetics, um, management, and feeding. But the most important at, in, in all these three is management. Because I can have poor converting animals. I can have animals that are poor converters. But if I manage them well, I'll still be making more money than somebody who has good animals but is not managing them very well. Because if you don't manage an animal that can convert very well, it's not, it's not going to convert. 
my owner is a proper converter is still going to be performing better than yours which is a high converter but which is being mismanaged that's basically it management is key in life top farming i don't know how much i'll say this again but that is the truth life top farming is all about management if you are not always present to you know see what your workers are doing at your farm or don't have the right manager that will manage your workers there's bound to be issues now um what is now the best breed of cattle of goods to raise here in the south? Our local goats there, which are the West African dwarf, they perform very poorly. They perform very poorly. Now you might ask me, why do I raise West African dwarf? I have my own reasons. It's not as if I don't want to raise uh, Sokoto Reds or Sahelians or the rest or Boa goats. I have my reasons, and with time, I'll also include all these animals. It's one step at a time. We are not rushing all these things. It's one step at a time. Now. If you have the finances, I would advise you go for pure breeds. Sorry, for um, boar goats. Boar goats are, in fact, they're the best goat breed in the world in terms of conversion with the uh, savannas. Or if you also want to try out Kalahari Red, you try that, but I would recommend you go for either the boars or savannas. Now, in the whole of West Africa, it's very, very difficult to get these savanna breeds. Pure breeds, I mean. But the boa goats can also be gotten, can easily be gotten. Now, if you want the boa goats, you can let me know. I don't sell boa goats, but I can link you to someone who is into the business. Because uh, I cannot sell what I don't have. I can only help you, tell you the right sources where you can buy from. Now, if you are able to get the pure boa goats, for me, the best way to do it is to crossbreed with that goat that is already adapted to your environment, which is here in the south, we have the West African dwarf. So imagine a cross of boa goats and West African dwarf. It's going to be a mixture of the fast growth rates, high conversion rates, big muscles, and the adaptability and resistance to the local diseases. So that's basically it. It's going to have that hybrid vigor combined together. Unlike when you just take, bring it a pure boa goats and you want to raise them here without the proper management is going to die off so let's assume that you have the capital to buy a boa goats you can buy two or three boa goats males box and put them in your farm let's say in your farm you have 100 west african dwarfs they will cross it and your children will and the, and the kids will perform very 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 well well that is my own take now if you don't have the money to go for boa goats or these uh, exotic breeds you can bring in sahelian goats sahelian goats are far much better in terms of conversion than the rest of the goods. The Sahelian goods, you can find them in Niger, uh, Kastina, border states here in Nigeria, Kastina, Kanu, and the rest. Now, you bring them here, manage them very well. You bring, just bring in the males, don't bring in the females. Because if you bring the males and females, they start producing pure breed Sahelians, which we find it very difficult to survive here if the management is not there. Now, you bring in these Sahelian males, you cross them with the local dwarfs. At least, if the dwarf was meant to attend 25 kg in three years, in that same three years, the cross of the Sahelian and West African dwarf should be getting to 30 to 35. It's an improvement. It's an improvement. Now, but the best way to do it is to get a boa goat. But this is like a, a, a solution to not having the finances to go for the boa goats because the boa goats are very expensive, at least to most Nigerians. Now, for the cattle, here in the south, I want to recommend the Mutrus because the, main reason, the major reason why I raised the Mutrus, I've told you, you people already, for traditional purposes. Now, if I'm going into cattle production, which I'm going to, I'm entering into in the next few months, I'm bringing in uh, white Fulani and the Bokulo breed too, but the white Fulani for now. Now, if you want to go for the cattle breed for meat production, here in the south, among our local cattle breeds here in Nigeria, we have the Sokoto Gudali, which is also called the Bokolo. We have the White Fulani, which is also called the Bunaji. We have the uh, uh, Red Bororo. We have the uh, Azwag breed. We have the Buzu breed. We have the uh, Ndama breed. We have the Kuri. We have other cattle breeds. But in terms of adaptability, the one that will survive in the south with our too much rainfall, because rainfall in the south is a big factor because in the north there's not much rainfall these animals are used to dry arid semi-arid environment of the north 
But here in the south, it's a totally different thing. There's water, there's rainfall, there's, rainfall, there's high humidity, which is a breeding uh, environment for parasites and diseases, unlike in, in, in the north. Now, you, are going to, you should bring animals that can easily adapt. Now, in terms of adaptability, the animal, that, the cattle breed that adapts the most here in the south is the white flannel. The white flannel enjoys the rainfall. In fact, uh, the farms around me, we are here in, uh, in Abia State, where they breed uh, white flannel breeds. They hardly provide shelter for them, and they still do well. I'm not saying you should not provide shelter for your cattle, but even without the uh, uh, shelter, they are still performing very well. So they are already, you, you are, they, are, they find it very easy to adapt to our south, southern environment. Now, the white flannel, that is the best local breed to raise here in, in the north, sorry, in the south. This north is entering my mouth too much. That's the best breed to raise here in the south. Now, as for the, uh, if you want to go into exotics, our advice, you don't bring in the, unless you, are, you want to breed like pure exotics at your farm, which will require much more management. But if you are going to breed, uh, uh, if you want to include pure breeds, sorry, exotic breeds into your uh, cattle breed, into your cattle head, I would advise you bring in a, a bull that will cross the white flannel and they will and they will you know give birth to calves that have combined breeds of the exotic breeds. Now if you are going for beef production, I would recommend the cemental cattle to you. If you are going for dairy, I recommend the Hosten Freshian cattle to you. Now the Hosten Freshian, the brown Swiss, all these animals, even the cementals, they are also good for milk production or for dairy. But if you are going for beef, I would recommend the angus and the cemental. But the cemental, you can find it everywhere. In fact, you don't even need to go for this cattle. You can just, uh, what do they call it? Bring someone that can do the artificial insemination for it, which I also have the contact to. Now, I'm helping you guys because somebody might ask me, why are you helping people? I'm not helping people because I have the time. Or I, have the, <laughs> I just want to help people. Because Nigeria needs to produce what it has to eat. The worst thing that can happen to Nigeria is if Nigeria is not able to produce what it cannot eat. eat. If Nigeria is unable to produce what it can eat. If there is food scarcity here in Nigeria and the price of food you know, skyrockets, it's going to be a problem. So that's why we, I keep making these videos so as to be able to educate you guys and make everything easier for you guys. So that's basically it on today's video. The white flanny the uh shige the white flanny and the and the rest those are the best cattle breeds to raise them in the north in the south then you can cross it with the exotics now as for the goose you can bring in the boar and cross it with the west african dwarfs or the, if you don't have the uh, financial uh, muscle to go for the boar you can use the um sahelians under good management because this the Sahelian goat is a goat that is already used to the desert environment. Desert environment. So that's why, you know, you have to be careful. I have to put in top-notch management for it to do well here in the south. So that's basically it on today's video. Keep watching. Keep uh, following me. This is like, this is where the cattle are. I'll see you guys in the next video.